Hey everyone. So there has been a community update from Larian. It actually just came out yesterday and I have, I've been so busy. I didn't see it until today. And so I just wanted to take a little bit here to go over it, even though it's not my normal content, just because so many people have been talking to me about just issues that they have with the ending. And there have even been some people sharing information with me, like on Twitter and stuff about, you know, how Sven has talked in the past about how they want to bring in an epilogue. And that was basically what people have been talking to me about is how they don't like the ending. So this update covers a lot of that. And so I thought it would definitely be worth covering and just talking about with you guys. So it starts off, it says, Hello all, since launching last month, a lot of tweaks and updates can already be seen in Baldur's Gate 3. Over the past few weeks, we've chased down bugs, polished up some cinematics, and used your feedback to help organize our thoughts and inform our plans going forward. The first major patch just launched, solving over a thousand bugs to hopefully make Baldur's Gate 3 an even better experience, but it was still a patch designed primarily to squash bugs. We want to go further than that. We now find ourselves at a time where we're able to properly sit down and consider how to parse feedback beyond bug fixing and UX tweaks. Patch 2 is just around the corner, and while it does include bug fixes, it also includes substantial performance improvements for the first time since launch. Perhaps more notably, we're adding better closure to the story's final act in the form of a more fleshed out ending for Carlac. Yay! Something many of you have been asking for. Before we get ahead of ourselves, let's take a moment to focus on a conversation some of you have been having in the background. Many of the points that come out of this conversation are being funneled into the umbrella term of cut content. So we thought it would be helpful to give you some clarity about that as we think about the future of Baldur's Gate 3. We went through many different threads and reviews with our community teams, and we think we've managed to truncate the discussion about cut content and Act 3 into three topics, performance, bugs, and user experience. Performance. The city of Baldur's Gate itself is ambitious technically, narratively, and in scope. One of the biggest issues with creating games is that technology is always trying to keep up with your ambition. And here we've been hit pretty hard by some setbacks. We know that Act 3's performance isn't as good as the first two acts, but the good news is that Patch 2 is bringing major performance improvements to the entire game, but more specifically to Act 3, where you'll feel it the most. We'll also be working throughout September to improve performance in Act 3, further with new technology that's been taking a bit longer to release than we expected. So that's great because one of the biggest issues I have with the game, I actually haven't had many performance issues, even though sometimes it might look that way in my recordings. That's only because I'm recording and that makes the performance even worse. But I've noticed memory leaks the longer I keep the application open. So the longer the game is open, I, and I would notice it would start getting worse and worse and worse as time went on. So, you know, if the game normally takes up like, you know, three gigs of memory by the time it was open for, let's say like even five hours, it would be taking up like anywhere from six to eight gigs, do you know? So definitely that'll be helpful. Let's see, now we've got bugs. We've seen your reports about Act 3 and we are as frustrated as you are by bugs spoiling the experience. So we're dedicated to solving these quickly. And as you've noticed by our hotfix and patch rollout, we're getting pretty fast. <laughs> our approach is that whenever blockers pop up, we either release a hotfix if a patch is not imminent or include the fix as part of a patch if the patch is imminent. With patch one, your experience should already be a lot better with most big issues solved by at least a workaround. Patch 2 looks to further eliminate some of the more major issues, including those found in Act 3. Some things that are currently being associated with cut content are actually things like companion reactions to events in the world that didn't trigger. That's interesting. That's very interesting. These are being solved where there seem to be loose ends or tying them up. So that's awesome because, you know, and there were a lot of issues with that in the first game, or, or rather not the first game, but in early access, there were a lot of issues with scenes just not triggering. And now I, I think mine felt pretty good when I played through, but it's really hard to say because you know, if you didn't see it, if it never triggered, you wouldn't even know. So this is the one that I am the most interested in. And I think this is what most people really wanna hear about. And that's the user experience. 
UX covers a lot of things from how it feels to play the game to how you feel when you're playing it. Baldur's Gate 3 is a game three years in early access and six years in the making. Many of the building blocks or ideas, tests, or however you want to refer to the junk data that falls outside of what we shipped with can and is being data mined. That's okay. But it's important to understand that not every building block in the giant box of Lego is needed to create the experience we ultimately envisioned and intended over years of iteration. We've seen three types of complaints that are being referred to as cut content. The first references content that actually doesn't properly trigger because of a bug. For instance, some of Minthara's reactivity. We've located what's causing that and are working on it. Expect a fix for this soon. I wouldn't have noticed this at all because my first game, I did not play with Minthara, so... <laughs> That's for all you evil, evil games out there. The second is about the epilogue. What's been data mined is not really cut content, but content that we didn't want to release because we didn't think it worked. We're pretty strict with ourselves and our ideas. If it isn't good, if it isn't fun to play, it doesn't make it into the game. One of the reasons why we trimmed the epilogue is because we were afraid the ending cinematics were becoming too long and would detract from the epicness of the experience. But clearly not everyone agrees with us, so we're going to do something about it. We've started expanding the epilogues and you'll see the first results of that in patch two with the addition of a new optional ending with Carlac. It's fiery, poignant, and gives her the ending she deserves. The third is about the things we actually didn't plan for and those we once considered but ultimately didn't do. It was always our intention for the Upper City to be an epic cinematic epilogue bringing the story of Baldur's Gate 3 to a close, but we didn't talk about that in advance because it would have been a major spoiler. We feel confident that there's enough content in Baldur's Gate 3 and the city itself clocking in weeks long playthroughs at a time, but that's not to say Baldur's Gate 3 didn't see cuts just as every game. It's just important to know that what ultimately shipped was planned long ago in function primarily of making Baldur's Gate 3 fun to play, not for us to close development quickly. Baldur's Gate 3 is a game with many release dates and despite us moving its launch up by around a month, it's still a couple years late. It was late because we grew teams, ambition, and ideas in function of it being the best game it could possibly be. Thankfully, not every idea makes it into the final launch. It wouldn't be the game you enjoy if they did. We're happy that Baldur's Gate 3 has resonated with a great many of you, but we'll never take that for granted. We're committed to tying up loose ends, fixing the remaining bugs, and improving things where we see they could and should be improved. So what can you expect from us in the future? First, we'll keep on monitoring what bugs you encounter and we'll make sure to patch them as fast as we can. Second, we'll start making improvements based on the feedback you're giving us. Baldur's Gate 3 means so much to a great deal of you, and in turn, that means the world to us. We love this game, and we're not done with it yet. We welcome your feedback, your threads, and also your words of encouragement. Wither's Wardrobe of Wayward Friends, which we hope to launch very soon, is an example of us integrating your feedback. This feature allows you to get rid of co-op party members who join your campaign, so you can continue on without them. We're also working on the ability to change your character's look once you've started a campaign, which is awesome. I've, I've really been wanting that. Though we don't have a release date for that yet, there will be more and you can expect us to come with modding support at some point too. Once again, thank you for giving us so much feedback. It's incredibly motivating for us and drives us to do better and better. And then we have the tab troubles. Introducing Wither's Wardrobe of Wayward Friends. Only in Baldur's Gate 3. Get in my closet. <laughs> okay. So let's like, let's digest this. Before I begin, I think it's safe to say, or it should be, that most of you who are listening to this have beaten the game already. And if you haven't, then you might not want to listen any further because I'm about to address some complaints I've seen brought up with the ending. Some people have expressed that it doesn't really feel like there's a lot of variety and choice in the end of the game, but honestly, compared to some of the games I've played in this same vein, I felt like there were a lot of good, meaningful choices there. In just my first game, I managed to see three different outcomes so far, and I could go back and see more, but I was mostly satisfied with what I got from it and wanted to save the rest for another playthrough. But I was very happy with that compared to, let's say, Dragon Age Inquisition, where you didn't really get a choice. The ending was fairly linear, and well, technically you had to buy the ending with Trespasser. They didn't even include it with the main game. 
And even when you were playing the base game, you had like what the choice to side with the mages or the Templars. And regardless of which side you picked, the opposite side would be red lyrium, whatever, with mostly the same path in the game. It only really affected at which point you recruited Dorian and Cole. The choices I had at the end of my game in BG3, and I'm sure a lot of you shared as well, were pretty huge. And then let's not forget all the permutations where every choice you make is going to affect the outcome individually for you. Now, there are some areas for improvement, definitely, especially when it comes to the epilogue or, you know, the ending after the final boss fight. One of the things that bugged me a smidge was that I got the option to choose what I wanted to do now that everything was over. And I thought it sounded like a good idea to have a big celebration. I was remembering that scene from Inquisition where everyone got drunk at the tavern and Cullen had to run out naked after he lost in strip poker. <laughs> and that was one of those really good scenes. And I thought it would be amazing to let loose with everyone now that it was done. Like, you feel as though you've earned it. So it was definitely a little disappointing to not get that. And even in Origins, I recall that one scene where you were in the main hall celebrating and you got to talk to everyone one last time, which was just really satisfying. Then there was another thing in Origins that was very simple and wouldn't take much effort to put together, but that I would love to see in BG3. And that was the ending text where they basically explained what happened to each character even some of the main story characters, but especially your companions. Now, some of them in BG3, you'll know what happens to them. But in my game, there were a great many that were glossed over that I would have liked to know more about where they ended up. Then there's also the issue of romance endings. Now, granted, I have only seen one ending so far, and that was romancing Astarian. But my husband also beat the game recently and told me that his ending with Carlac didn't have any kind of special ending scene. In my game, I got this special little scene that played after the main one ended, and he never got that. And I suspect that there are a bunch of less flesh out characters that might not have gotten as much in terms of their ending. It's impossible to know for sure without seeing them all, but I'd love to know at least vaguely who you romanced and whether you got extra dialogue with just them at the end, you know, after that whole bit with Carlac. And speaking of Carlac, that's another big problem. And I'm so very happy they're going to wrap that up into something that feels cleaner. I kept thinking we were going to be able to fix her engine, even after finding tons of enriched infernal iron. There was no option I could find to do that. In my game, Will ended up taking her to Avernus to save her, but I would have liked it to be more. Just like I'd like to see more content for some of the other characters like Halson. Still, it was really cool to see Larian say that they thought we wouldn't want too many cinematics at the end. Like, it would be too much one on top of the other. But I think they underestimated how attached we'd get to these characters. I spent over 100 hours playing my first game, and I know others who spent over 200 hours. That's a lot of time. You almost expect the ending alone to be at least an hour long, you know? <laughs> and really, I'd love to see them create an expansion that's sort of a little more of a focused version of Awakenings with the same characters instead of different ones where we can maybe see what everyone is up to sometime in the future. I realize that would be really hard to do considering they'd have to carry forward all the choices you made up until that point, but if they could figure out a way to do it, it would be amazing. I would easily pay another 60 for it especially if it meant more romance scenes as well as more story and personal quests. Imagine being able to find a new way for Astarian to walk in the sun if you chose not to ascend him. This could work for just about every character. But honestly, at the end of the day, I really have faith that Larian will do right by Baldur's Gate 3. They already have, as far as I'm concerned. People just need to realize that they're not dealing with the same kind of devouring creature that is a big name studio like EA or Microsoft. 
it's not all about profits to Larian. It's about making an incredible game. And that very reason alone means they're going to take the feedback to heart. I've already seen tweets from Sven talking about how they want feedback. And then today, before I even got this video finished, I saw him talking about how they're bringing the cast back into the studio to record new dialogue, which is just awesome. It didn't even take long for the decision to be made. And I love that they're communicating it with us. I still remember the time period after Cyberpunk 2077 released, and there were so many problems with the bugs and complaints about a lack of what they promised being delivered. CDPR just went completely quiet. I know I sent a ton of feedback to them, especially on the romances, and I was ignored at literally every opportunity, as were others who tried to offer up suggestions on other aspects of the game that were important to them. It really matters at the end of the day to communicate with the community. And I really have no doubt that Larian is going to take care of it. It would be rather silly of them to just drop the game after putting so much time and effort into it. So keep an eye out for patch two and probably many more to come. So that's it for me today. I also wanted to remind you guys, if you haven't already seen my community post, I am looking forward to interviewing Amelia Tyler, who plays the narrator in BG3. If you have a burning question that you must know the answer to, go leave a comment on the post, which I'll leave a link to up on the screen and down below in the description as well. I'm going to go through and pick my favorites and hopefully we can have a really fun interview. I'll try my best to avoid getting roasted. <laughs> <laughs> I'll have to remember not to ask her what her sign is. <laughs> but then again, it might be fun to get roasted by her. <laughs> so keep an eye out for new things on the horizon because there's going to be a lot coming. If you enjoyed the video, consider subscribing as there is going to be a huge slew of new BG3 content coming out over the next few months, possibly years. I mean, there's a lot. Thanks to my Patreons for the support. And if you'd like to help support the channel too and get access to the private Discord and a whole other chunk of content on Patreon, then head over and make a pledge. I'll see you guys later.